very good evening and a warm welcome to the program. Thank you for joining us. We're coming to you from, well, I'm coming to you from the Kampala uh, Serena Conference Center, the NTV Uganda offices, but my guests tonight are coming to you from possibly their offices, their homes, wherever they are. Um, clearly none of them is still on the mountain, so it's good to have all of you back in one piece. Thank you for agreeing to have this conversation with me. Um, tonight we're going to speak about travel and to be more specific, a journey up a mountain. My guests are men and women who you climbed uh, Mount Treasury? Yes. I'll quickly introduce them and I'll start with uh, Jovita, Jovita Babidia, who is an auditor at KPMG. Jovita, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Josephine. I'm glad I'm here. Could wave so that, you know, there are a couple of faces on the screen. You don't know who is who. Okay, um, and then I'll go to Victoria Arivo, who is the head of packaging at Uganda Breweries Limited. Victoria, welcome. Hi, thank you, Justin. Right, and then Pablo Sempa, who is a chef and a lover of life. Pablo, it's good to have yes. you on the show. Thank you very much, Josephine. And uh, then we have Anthony Natif, who is a pharmacist and the managing director of Guardian Health Limited. Anthony, it's good to have you. Uh, nice to be here. I can hear you great. Great. Uh, finally, we have Elizabeth Motesi, who is the country manager at Next Gen Fuel Works. Uh, Liz, it's good to have you on the show. Thanks for having me, Josephine. Okay, so um, why did you embark on this adventure? Yes, uh, so climbing mountains is what we do for fun. At least that's something we have in common, all of us who are here and a whole bunch of others the mountain squares. Uh, we find that it's a fun way to spend our free time. Well, it gives you an adrenaline rush. So if you're an adrenaline junkie, that's something that you want to do. It allows you to go away from the city. It clears your mind. It does not come with a hangover. It's, it's a fun way to spend, <laughs> to spend your time. Uh, strangely, I got into mountain climbing because I had bad eyes. So I had this terrible uh, eye infection that wasn't responding to treatment and it was super irritated. So someone just told me, well, actually my doctor told me, try and go to a cold environment. So uh, on a whim, I went and hiked Mohabura uh, down in um, southwestern Uganda, Gisoro, which is probably the most challenging one day hike in uh, in east africa and uh, i was hooked so while on muhavura one of the guides told me about mountain slayers uganda and uh, i joined these guys and i found mountain climbing to be a very good release it allows for it's a humbling experience so did it ever uh, help your eyes oh absolutely i got back uh, after well two days in gisoro and the irritation had gone and as uh, I had got a new hobby, I haven't looked back since. Okay. Uh, Victoria? I guess uh, for me, it's just um, why did I choose to climb a mountain? It's pure adventure. Like Liz said, it's a way to release. It's a way to be in a community of people where you're fully present. There is no network, there's nature, there's fresh air. And you're just forced to bond. So you're forced to see everybody in their true character, when they are happy, when they are sad, when they are fed up. But you're all in one place and you're all accommodating each other. For me, it's just a pure adventure, nature, and just people in their raw form um, is why I would go to a mountain. You've spoken of all these emotions. You've not spoken about people when they are afraid. It feels like there's no fear for any of you, like you do this all the time. Uh, you didn't see anybody afraid? Um, no, there is just a whole, um, the, 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 the fear comes when you're faced with different, different landscape or different um, vegetations, like on Renzori, let's say we had some steep climbs, that's when the fear kicks in. But purely before you climb, there is no, there's just pure joy, yeah? It's only when you get to the mountain that you're like, why did I do this? Like, my life flashes through my eyes. 
I remember the feeling, I climbed one mountain in my life and that's the one mountain that I'm going to ever climb. It's going on my CV and every document and that's the one that's going to count. <laughs> but I remember the feeling of you starting the journey and you're energetic and then halfway I'm thinking, because why? What's the point? Exactly. Why am I doing this? Pablo, why do you do this? Um, for starters, I started out because of totally different reasons. I, uh, I wasn't into mountain climbing until uh, I was going through a rough patch in my life. And uh, a friend of mine called Emmanuel told me, Pablo, why don't you just come and hike with us? It was a group of folks, mountain slayers. And I remember that was in Pangawan about four or five years ago. Uh, I got there and when I, I went there just to try something new, get out of uh, Kampala, get out of the hustle bustle of life. And I met these folks and they just were walking through the forest. And I thought hiking, the image that I had in my mind was when you go hiking, you go for a stroll through the forest, you're looking at trees, counting butterflies. I got there, I look at all these people, they are very small, they're not as big as me. By that time I was fun. I'm thinking, yeah, I can do this. There's nothing much to do, it's just walking. And I remember walking and I almost fainted at one point. Uh, by the time I went back to the camp, I promised myself I would never do it. When I came back to Kampala, I realized I, I went through a lot of, I had a lot of mental searching while I was walking because I was thinking to myself, I was looking at my life, I was reevaluating my life decisions. And I realized that is something that I actually liked because when I came back, it's like a whole new Pablo came back. Town can be full of noise, the din, um, life, phone calls, work, and you never get time. Even when you think you have time by yourself, you actually never get time to have by, by yourself, like to find out who are you in a place where your body can't go any further, you know, bones are all giving up, your muscles are giving up. Who is Pablo in that situation? And that's why I do it. Um, Jovita? Um, yes, I, th I think personally, the reason why I do climb mountains is because I have too much energy in me that I need to release. So as an auditor, I think everyone, most people can relate that we work so hard. And I felt like, I feel like the only time I get to actually shift my energy away from work is embarking on a mountain to climb. And um, actually this time around, this was my second time to go to the Renzeris, but this time I, I did the, at the Mount Speak as opposed to uh, Margarita because I'd done that I think two years ago. But I just felt like it was an opportunity for me to just um, go out there, forget about work, um, just be by myself with people, interact and basically build relationships without social media. Um, when you're on the mountain, there's no social media pressure because no one's phone is, has networks. So you're forced to kind of uh, bond and force conversations, even when you feel like, you know, you don't want to talk to someone, you phone a situation where you're oh, just you've there with the person. <laughs> 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 I thought you were That's talking to me. I, I, I enjoyed your company so much. <laughs> yeah, but it's one of those things that, mm. that I don't know. I wish everyone knew how exciting and how fulfilling mountain climbing was um the feeling of getting to the summit at almost 7 p.m and to come back down you know you come back up to the summit and there's no trouble on you you know you don't we don't care about what time you get to come as long as you've, you've achieved that um ultimate uh, goal that, that you, you you set out for yourself so and i think for me it's, it's something that i would encourage everyone to try because most people don't like don't probably think about it because they've never tried and they don't know whether it's something for them but trust me 90 percent of people who try mountain climbing will go back and look for another summit you can accept <laughs> josephine i mean josephine you josephine you asked about fear fear i don't think anyone can say they never fear when they're on the mountain probably every one of us had a near-death experience on uh, either Stanley <laughs> or Speak or whatever. Yes. Every one of us did. You see life flash before your eyes. But yes. the, the, the possibility of overcoming those fears and ultimately achieving your goal of getting to the top of that mountain and then getting back to camp, 
somehow helps you forget all the trouble you have to go through to get there. Fear is good and fear is natural and you hang on a rock that is slippery, slanted at 75 degrees. Oh, and you're like, yeah, let's go. And, yeah. But you, yeah, you know what they say. Way. You know what they say, you, you pick your struggles and I am glad that's your struggle and it's really not going to be mine. <laughs> not a struggle, I, I, I want to ask, not I want to ask something. Um, let's start from you preparing for the journey, you actually taking the journey and you coming down from the journey. Let's talk about the cost first. I think that for a lot of people who are watching you guys or see the pictures you post on social media are thinking, hey, these rich people. They have money in COVID time when all of us are broke. For them, they have money to go and climb a mountain. So talk to me about the cost of something like this. Uh, so what we do at Mountain Slayers, I think we, we take pride in that, is organizing budget travel. We, we, it's, a, it's a key thing when we are planning our, our, our slaves, as we call them. We try to keep it as uh, cost-friendly as possible. Obviously, things like big mountains come with a slightly higher cost. So normally we have just one big mountain in the entire calendar. That's throughout the year. So it allows people to plan and save up slowly, small amounts. Then you don't, you don't feel the pinch so much. Um, well, you mentioned COVID. COVID was a bit of a blessing on this particular one because we were able to negotiate for something slightly cheaper than the usual. And also play the Ugandan card, you know, we've, we've been in lockdown, tourism is suffering, you know. We take what we have, we don't have a lot of money, give us a discount. And uh, the guys that we were dealing with really came through for us on that one. So it wasn't as expensive as, as it should have been. But true, it's not a cheap hobby. Uh, the gear is not cheap, but oh. you learn to plan. You, you, you buy a, one thing at a time. Just to add it to what Sister Liz is saying, we also do an annual calendar, so we know what's going to happen the whole year, and you get to choose. Yeah. So you can start saving up for the specific ones you're going for. Also for the gear, you don't buy it all at once because it's very expensive. So maybe one hike, you buy a shoe, the next hike, you buy a tent. The next hike, uh -huh. a sleeping bag. So by the time the major mountain comes, you have saved up on equipment, and you have also saved up some money specifically for that mountain. Uh, uh, so for everything that thing. I buy, I'm carrying up the mountain with me. Not Depends necessarily. What kind of hike it is. Depends what kind of hike it is. If, yeah. it is a big, if it's a big mountain, usually you, you don't carry your stuff. You, have, you carry what you call a day bag. So your day pack usually has your snacks, your, uh, your water, your medication, your poncho, your sleeping bag, not sleeping bag, your, your jacket. Um, then the rest of the things are carried by the porters and you find them at, uh, it's organized, you find them at a camp. So you have one location that you set off from and you have to make it to the next location. You, you, everything you find it that side. That way, you well, Pablo, that is your bags. Pablo, that is if you're doing Renzori. If you're doing Kana, yes, my yes. brother, you're going to carry your own cross. But uh, <laughs> on the issue of course, Josephine, you have to understand uh, the very nature of Mountain Slayers Uganda is a not-for-profit club. Yes. So it's a collection of eclectic individuals who just love the outdoors. So uh, for this recent trip, it was organized by uh, Liz in, in spectacular fashion. In... Um, without uh, any financial incentive, just out of love for, for what we do. So we try and make sure that if the, the trip fits people's budgets. None of you is actually giving me any specifics on how much damage it did to your pocket. Just to give us a, <laughs> a, a picture of what okay, that looks like. Okay, let's say plus gear and everything you could Maybe $1,000. It's like another guy who goes and has a beer. If we collectively sum up the cost of those beers over a year, you'll find that that guy is spending a lot more money, becoming unfit, as opposed to me, or Pablo, or <laughs> Viola, or whoever, who is going to collect this kamane and stick it on a mountain and go get fit and build experiences. So, I mean, it's, everyone has their poison. Okay, I have another question in steel of mm. cost. 
you said about one thousand dollars with uh, the cost of gear, everything. Right? Yes, but the actual mountain. How is much and, and the was this particular trip for you guys, so that I can compare it to if I went through a tour company and actually paid to climb Mount Rezori? Uh, we don't have one figure. The total cost would have been one point three million, but you you need to realize that some of us had maybe hiking shoes for the mountain, others didn't. So you'll find that cost goes a bit higher or goes lower. So it's not one specific. No, 1.3 million are mountain fees. Pardon? Yes, mountain yeah, fees. Yeah, so you have, just, uh, just the mountain fees. Mean, you'll have 1.3 million fee. for the mountain fees, about 300,000 for transportation, uh, maybe another 300,000 for tips. Uh, for tips. Hotel. Tips. Hotel, yeah, sleepy, hotel, then, yeah. then another like 120 or 180 for the for the tips for the porters and the guides. So okay. round it off, okay. the damage would have been I around think, I think two that, million. That, tips, that tips estimate could have been close to how much we actually spent. On okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's the good the auditor, to have the, the auditor has the auditor. spoken. Yes, the auditor has summed it all up. She has <laughs> with what you said, Anthony. But I'm thinking. So you mentioned, just to be clear to the people who are, are watching, you mentioned transport fees. Let's be clear, you, the transport was your legs. So the transport you actually are talking about is the ride to from, the, yes, bottom from. Of the, okay, the bottom yeah. of the mountain. And when you speak about hotel fees, you're speaking about, you know, before you the start climbing. The mountain. mountain. The mountain. Oh, okay, let's take a short break and we'll be right back. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. We're coming to you from the Kampala Serena NTV Uganda uh, offices. And uh, we're speaking today about travel and more specifically the journey up a mountain. And these guys all climbed Mount Renzori a couple of weeks ago. How strenuous is it to climb the mountain? Is it like running the marathon, like a really, really, really long marathon? What is it like? No? Not even close. Oh my God, Joby! Like go 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 I think I can go past on that one because yeah, I think most of us late, even if it's not just a mountain, I'm normally the last because I take it really, really slow. <laughs> this but is true. normally my target is getting there, and I've always gotten to the top. So it's a marathon. You just take it slow, take it to your pace. There's no prize for getting there fast. Just walk until you get there, one foot in front of the other. That's what I can say. <laughs> How many hours yeah, um, um, do you guys walk? Uh, so for, for this particular mountain, it was uh, just under 80 kilometers, uh, seven days. Uh, you gain uh, an altitude of... Uh, north of 4,000 something because you start at around 1,000 and some change. Uh, the mountain itself, now you see we keep saying Renzori, but Renzori is a collection of more than 16 mountains. So you find that Jovita uh, hiked uh, Mount Peak, which we think is the hardest in those mountains. Ooh, yeah. So then we, 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 yeah, for the ones that have a trail, there are those that have not been hiked. Then you have yeah. uh, the common one, that we learned in SST to be Mount Renzori, but that's erroneous. It's Stanley. So that's the one that has Margarita. It's, um, it's a seven day brutal hike. But the point is, uh, Pab as Pablo will tell you, he has bad knees, but he got there. It didn't matter that he didn't get there fast. The, the, the prize is in the journey, not in the destination. So you take your time, enjoy nature. It, you find the most mind blowing, beauty in uh, in those mountains and you know you don't want to rush that just so you can get to the top and get back down you just enjoy you check out butterflies you look at mountain goats you look at black monkeys i mean some of us even had time to look at forever flowers have you ever seen one of those <laughs> and you know it's it's gorgeous you move you move across lakes you move through streams you move through swampy areas 
I mean, every one of those gives you uh, a visual treat that is indescribable and kind of helps you forget that your body is taking a huge punishment. Now, to get to the top and down, I think every one of us lost weight. Uh, the club president lost uh, three kilograms really? in seven days. Yes. I lost yeah. four. Yeah. Yeah, Pablo lost, I lost four. Three. I lost three. I lost, I think three. I lost five. In a space of one week, and are that's you not joking because these the guys are not feeding you. No, no, you no. Unless you wanna you can't die. Joke. I mean, oh, these guys who jog, man, those those Bakonjo men who are running up the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So on on a day, you you say seven days. On say day one, how long do you walk for before you call for a break uh, and say, you know? What what's the what's the thing that says let's call for a break? Is one man down and okay, let's rest? What happens? So, so one of the things that you wanna take it? Yeah, one of the things that uh we really try to discourage is uh going on someone's pace or in a group space, you have to find your own rhythm, your own pace. So there is no that this man has down, this man is down, you have to stop now. No, you find your own pace. That's the first thing. And in terms of walking, we don't have, you're going somewhere. You cannot say that I'm going to walk for two hours, three hours. It'll, it'll be determined by your pace. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the mistakes that I did in the beginning was I tried to, when I started out hiking, I used to move on people's paces and I'd get really tired. On this specific mountain, I went with two things in my mind, two ideas. The first idea was that I needed to summit. I needed to Yo. get on top because for the last three years, I've been doing a lot of hiking, but I've not completed. And then Sorry. number two, I uh, wanted and to be the first man. And <laughs> I also wanted to be the first man to cook something on top of the mountain. Be the first man to cook on a stove, on a plumpen in Margarita. So that was my inspiration, that was my motivation, and I just kept moving. To answer your question, if, uh, when do we get to stop? There are places on the, on the trail where you have a lunch break. That is pretty much where the general people, everyone can stop, but you can literally stop wherever you want. You can stop when you're tired, you can take a breath, you can even take a few minutes to rest. I was the last one to get off that mountain, and for two nights, I think I was doing about 13, 14 hours of walking. And uh, I completed now, it. Another uh, question here for me then, Pablo. Um, when you say that you walk at your pace, right? Where is safety in that? I, I figure there's safety in numbers if you're walking together and you're speaking about all the things that you met along the way, Anthony. What are the guides, are some of the guides waiting at the back with the very last person? What's happening? I mean, the club things that Uganda has is very good tourism setup. Most of the places we have hiked, we've had professional guides from Uganda Wildlife Authority. Uh, we've had the army sometimes with us. So um, you're not going to be alone. There will okay. always be someone with you. You'll always have a guide because they're professionals. They know that if, if you're one of the people who is slow like me, they'll make sure that they are behind with you. So you won't yeah. be alone. The another yeah. thing, uh, so the, like in this case, we didn't use your guides, but I mean, people like uh, Renzori Mountaineering Service, Renzori Hikers Association, these guys, go up this mountain like some of them have gone up this mountain from 1982 so yeah. they know all the places on this mountain and the club also has this rule of no one gets left behind incidentally you'll find that the strongest hiker is usually the sweeper the one who stays behind but in the absence of a sweeper the senior guide will always stay behind with the last person and also josephine your your question kind of um invokes some sort of fear that there's animals that are going to come up yes. and eat the people <laughs> oh, no. walking there's behind. No animals. That's not the case. That's not the case. These are trails that are established and they are super safe. Of course, some mountains like Sabino, uh, like uh, Mohavura, have a few wild animals that can come out at certain times. But on those mountains, you have guys with guns who are protecting you. 
but it also there's times snake within just waiting for like that it's one it's so hard to find a snake in minus 10 oh, degrees yeah. okay, no, are no, no, more, no. more scared of you than than, than you are of them <laughs> <laughs> also, also they are okay. part of the experience don't harm me it them. won't harm you yeah. if you see a snake it's part it's part of the whole experience when it's very far away yeah. the other piece to add yeah, to this is a part uh, the other piece um, about the journey is the fact that um, with mountain slayers, they're really, really nice people. As in, when someone is very tired or slow, that is a person that will set the pace for everybody else. That mm -hmm. way, you don't leave anybody behind. So if I'm sick, I will be the one setting the pace for whoever is behind me. So I'll be setting the pace for everybody else so no one gets behind. So. I think that is the other beauty that we love hiking with the mountain slayers. It will take care of you. You're right, but just to be sure, nobody is climbing mountains when they're sick. No. No. Yeah, you, no. You, you, you can't. But, but <laughs> however, <laughs> however, there's a possibility of getting sick on, on the, the mountain. Yes. Yeah. 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 While on the mountain. Yeah, the pharmacist that wants to say something. That the, does the pharmacist then, so when you're on the mountain and you're climbing, does the pharmacist come with pharmacist gear? Does Jovita just uh, do all the very, mathematics for everything that you're going to do? Inter inter does inter Pablo point. do the cooking? Does um, uh, Elizabeth, do you carry fuel on the, you know, <laughs> does Victoria bring the drinks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Would that mission that fuel? Nice. I mean, you can't do something. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a health committee as a club. Okay. Uh, so before you make the trip, you have a chief slayer who scouts uh, these, these mountains and then will come up with an info pack. In this case, we had Liz, who was the chief slayer for uh, Renzori. So she kind of gets all this information for everyone. And then we have a health team, a health committee. They may not hike a particular mountain. They may not go with you on the trip, but they will they will have representatives there and they'll prepare you with a medicine pack. You will always have uh, emergency contacts and all that stuff. You're expected to declare any meds, your own, any illnesses you're, or you're, you're dealing with. And also the club ensures that it does not take amateurs to big mountains. I mean, we can walk around the Ray Ray, we can run around here and there, but there is a certain amount of minimum experience that's required before you can be signed up for uh, a big mm -hmm. mountain. So, I mean, we go through a lot of uh, uh, levels in order, a lot of checks in order to make sure we minimize the risk. That being said, even the fittest person in this world can suffer, can suffer acute mountain sickness. You're on top of the mountain and you run out of air. So, but the chief slayer and the health committee will have liaised with uh, uh, the company that's taking us, in this case, uh, Renzori Mountaineering Services and Renzori Hikers Association, and they know how to evacuate someone from the mountain as fast as humanly possible. And I will gladly tell you that we did not, much as we had a few incidents here and there, we didn't have any casualties. Every one of us came out fine. And uh, apart from a few uh, peeling lips and peeling skins, which is normal, no I mean, we, and banged up knees, we are fine these are i mean it's par for the course so what's next after this model what's the next big one ah uh, you want to come no Adam. Adam? <laughs> Adam. Adam. yes you should come Adam. You should come, come to Adam. you'll be amazed at how beautiful we'll karamoja is be right back Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. We are speaking tonight about climbing mountains and I am speaking to a group of five. How many of you climbed the mountain, um, Liz, with this particular trip? 26. 26 people? Yes. So you're in charge of 26 people. Mountains are a very, very daunting task for me, so I'm just trying to get it in my head that uh, security and precaution oh. is taken at any point. Yes. 
So okay. yeah, so you're, you're, you're in charge of basically their comfort, making sure they're all going up there. Of course, the goal is to make sure everybody gets to the summit and back in one piece. Um, there's a team that remains behind the health and safety committee will be, will have a list of um, the next of kin in case of anything, thank goodness we've not had to use that. Uh, you work out the menu, you make sure you have enough guides on the trail. You're basically you're the liaison between the club and um, the company that's handling you on the mountain. Okay. So yeah. Javita, you've been very quiet. What does it look like at the top of Mount Renzori? Hmm. I think, I think Mount Renzori, Renzori has so many tops and I believe each top is different. Um, so far I've done two tops, two, two peaks um, of, of the Renzoris and they're all different. The view there is spectacular. You can only see it if you get there. Like no one can tell you what it is and the feeling until you actually invest time and energy in going to the top. Yeah, but it's, it's, a, it's a very beautiful, the whole journey. Actually, I think for me, I've, I think I've done so far about six mountains or so, and Renzori tops them all. It's very diverse. Including very Kilimanjaro. Diverse. Including Kilimanjaro, honestly. And I don't even know Renzori why we haven't made enough noise about Renzori. It's a very beautiful mountain. Very challenging, which is a good thing for Mount, uh, for for um hikers really they, they're looking out for challenges it has a very good challenge you you get challenged from day one to the last day you know um the vegetation there keeps changing you know you just keep moving from bamboo to to um rocks to ice to you know there's a lot of diversity on the mountain i'm looking forward yeah, to the looking forest like, yes yeah, yeah like the forest the and it, it's, it's, the it's, it's just beautiful I mean, Justin, you need to give it that one last try. Yes. Yes, well, <laughs> really, I've only climbed one mountain, and I think you need to be at a certain level to climb, you know, like you all just said, so I'm, 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 I'm good. How cold is it? I, I could see all of you were huddled up. There was the snow, there was all of that. Liz seems yeah. to be freezing right now, even as yeah. I asked the <laughs> It was cold. Yes. And, and for me, I was surprised that it was cold right from day one. Yes. I thought the first camp would be a bit warmer, but it was yes. cold right from day one and just kept getting colder and colder. And then on the last night when we came down from the summit, it actually started to snow while we were getting to camp. And it snowed all night. It's the coldest yeah. night I have ever had in my life. Very cold. Yeah. What's up there? <laughs> Rocks. <laughs> and snow. <laughs> In, uh, to say rocks and snow is actually too. It, it's a very it's beautiful mountain and, it, yeah. and, and injustice. You know, I mean, at the very hide, top. At the very top. Yeah, at the very top. But this is not to, to, play, to downplay the beauty. It's actually very, very beautiful. Because yeah. you're you in the know, clouds, you're, also, you're basically above the clouds, so it's that mix of cloud, rocks, snow, sand, cold. You know, it's it's crazy. It's it's, it's um, especially you know, when the I, sun comes up. Yes, yeah, an interesting conversation I had with uh, Evelyn. This was her first multi-day mountain experience, and then I'm like, "What do you expect to see at the top of a mountain? You won't believe it." She did not expect to see lakes on a mountain. She didn't expect to see so many rivers, so yeah. many forests, and all this stuff. But a mountain is like you're walking through strange landscapes that just keep changing the higher you go. And unless someone tells you, oh, you're on top of a mountain, you might not actually realize. You may as well just be walking in, the, in your it's backyard going, yeah. garden, except yeah. it's raised. So you find proper lakes, and you find uh, swamps, you find whatever. But when someone is looking at the mountain from far, they actually think it's one giant heap of rock. Well, I mean, uh, Kilimanjaro is, but these other ones, they are gorgeous. <laughs> now, when they say the peak of the mountain, I mean, we are thinking, the rest of us who are down here are thinking like <laughs> one little peak thing that's up there. But then I see Pablo cooking, you know, with his stove. You carried a stove up the mountain. 
first of all, getting there was a dream come true for me because I never thought I would ever hike again. I had surgery last year, so I thought to myself I would never really make it. But on top of that, I also love cooking and I wanted to try something new. And I went online, tried to look for people who have tried doing it, get some information to see how meat is affected in terms of height, weight, what kind of uh, um, fire do I need? Do I, can gas work with low oxygen levels? And there was no information on that. So we just had to wing it. I asked around, they're like, coal wouldn't work, gas wouldn't start. Maybe I'd rather be try kerosene. And uh, yeah, went and did it. The Guinness Book of World Records needs to give you your record, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> the man who got to Margarita without a functional knee. <laughs> on top of that, he cooked on top of Margarita and people ate. I mean, that's insane. But anyway, Josephine, the top of the mountain is not some sort of needle, like sharp point. Some mountains just have flat, flat peaks. What, what is the preparation like? Um, Pablo, you mentioned your knees, yeah? And you mentioned you had surgery just before that. What does preparation for climbing a mountain, any mountain, a big mountain, a small mountain, what does it look like? Do you have to do particular things days leading to it or do you just wake up and say, yeah, we go climb? Yeah, definitely you have to be a little bit in shape. At least you have to be able to, to walk. You have to be able to breathe. So cardio exercises are good. Um, in preparation for Renzori, we did a lot of cardio. Me and a friend of mine, uh, Jimmy Kabakande. Uncle Jay. Uncle Jay. We, uh, we call him Uncle Jay. So we walked out a lot, ran up and down the hill. Um, also trying to increase the amount of oxygen your lungs can hold. So swimming is also good. Uh, that's pretty much it. The one, I think I just proved with this last, with, with this hike, that you need 70% brain power and will yeah. to hike. 90%, make that 90%. 90%. Okay, I, okay, 90%, because with me, uh, the first, the, on, the, on the second day, my second knee was giving out because I was putting all the pressure on it. Uh, it was because of Herman helping me out that I was able to actually summit. But what gives you the, the resolve is your body gives up. You reach a point where your body can't go any further. It, you're in so much pain, you just can't. You, yeah. As, as, um, as uh, our auditor said, you just have to have it in your head one step in front of the other. That's it. So at least 90%, it's brain. Uh, your body will come into play. But none of us... Be, ever gets that prepared. You'll never get so prepared to the point that you're going to push your body in low oxygen levels, in that cold, at that height. So it's really the brain. The, the, but the also, uh, beyond physical preparation, you have to study. You have to know how to recognize dangerous signs of especially altitude sickness because oh, yeah. it can kill. So... Every one of us going there is a mini medic. You have to listen to your body when it's telling you, you know what, I can't function on this amount of oxygen. There's no shame in quitting. And you get mm -hmm. back and save your life and come back next time. But also we, we do, obviously, as part of our preparation, we carry meds that we think are going to be useful. They're medicines that help your body acclimatize, function very well on low oxygen. Those are important, and we pack those. There's some energy boosters that we pack, and stuff like that. But even with all that preparation, it's the will to get there. When I remember um, when I got to uh, that Margarita Glacier, I was gassed up. I was struggling to breathe. But what got me there was, you know what? I told myself, I'll take 10 steps and then rest five minutes. And it took me hours to get there. So when we reached the actual, uh, that stony part of Margarita, the guide had to come out with this and then tied my waist, <laughs> tied, my, tied me to him, and then he walked me up. I'm at the peak, but he's walking me to the highest point. Because uh -huh. of this, I had given up. I mean, my body had just given up. But, you know, I knew, I kept telling myself, just put your foot 
one foot next to another, one foot next to another until you get there. Then when you get there for some inexplicable reason, your body somehow forgets about all the pain you put yeah, it through. Yeah, and it's, yeah, yeah. it's excitement. And it's then excitement you have to deal rush. with and then you have to deal with coming down, which is actually for most mountains, it's going more, da it's going more dangerous. I was going there because I'm told that, that coming down is actually worse than going up. And I, oh, I first more dangerous, did that, yeah. that climb, I was thinking to myself, oh, God, I can't wait. We can just swing back down or slide back down or whatever. Hey, coming down was a whole, a whole story. Tell me about actually, coming down. On, on this specific trip, we came up with, uh, uh, we didn't come up with it. We were using the term Gogol because... <laughs> <laughs> go, go when, as kids, you sit and you, you, you slide in the mud. Uh, some yeah. of us, especially me, I reached a point where I couldn't go any further while we were going down. I was the last of my, of my group. And I pretty much met the last maybe three kilometers from that mountain on my buttocks, just sliding. <laughs> <laughs> But I got back. I got back. Yeah. I think yeah. I think we all had to do a, a, a lot of gogolo at some point. We had to do a yeah. But also yeah. it's the safest way to come down the rocks. I mean, not everyone is like those Bakonjo men who just stand on a slippery rock slanted at 75 degrees. The easiest way is you find a crack, put your foot, and then roll down slowly by slowly. Lower your center of gravity and come down. It's the safest way to calm down the mountain. And also, this I agree. Is, it also highlights the importance of getting proper gear because none of the pants I saw had holes behind, yet they had been super abused. <laughs> and you're rolling it on a rock. <laughs> right. and I, I, I think the other thing that would help, um, especially if you have weakness like myself, I always wear knee braces when I'm going down to just give me extra support on the knees. Because when I'm going down, my knees really give way. So I think that's one other thing that people need to put into consideration when you're looking for gear. It's very important to yeah. put that extra support. I, I find it interesting that uh, many of us have knee issues, really. Yeah. And we still do what we do. Because I also yeah. came down with bandages on both knees. But that's what I needed to get me out of the mountain, just to give the knees extra support. Um, in closing, and if, if we could just go around with everybody just speaking to us about um, this whole climbing mountains thing and um, just encouraging other Ugandans out there who are watching or listening to, 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 to find these things interesting. At the very least, look out for them and try them. And I will start at the top. Jovita, you go first. Okay, thank you very much, Josephine. I think for me, it's to encourage Ugandans to explore the beauty of Uganda. Uganda is extremely beautiful. Um, we have rain, we have, uh, we have the sun, we have snow, and most of this beauty actually is in places that are not easy to find. You just need to pay the price to actually get to that beauty. So for me, mainly is to encourage Ugandans, get out there, dare yourself to do something different. You realize you actually love mountain climbing, um, mm -hmm. but you can't do that until you try it out. So I'd encourage everyone to try at least one mountain. If you think it's not your thing, then quit, but at least do a try. Do a try around and see whether you like it or not. All right, thanks, Jovita. I will try Thank another you. mountain. Uh, Yay! Yay! <laughs> yeah. So, I would like to thanks Josephine. I'd like to encourage everyone. Um, I guess mountain climbing is different. Like Jovita said, there's so much beauty, but for you to see this beauty, you have to get out of your comfort zone. And also you'll never know what your body can do until you kind of um, push yourself out of your limits and build Uganda, as in buy Uganda, build Uganda. It is really, really beautiful. Go out there invest in the gear and get yourself some very good um, uh, experiences on the mountain. All right. Thank you, Victoria. And I think when you speak about the Hi. gear, I think one of the most important things then is the shoes, right? Anthony, as, you, um, as, you, as you, you, you tell us about your parting shot, the shoes are important, I think. From my one experience, I felt like if I had on my everyday canvas shoes, it was not going to happen. 
oh, don't go to a mountain in sneakers. They look appealing, they are cute and all. Just don't, you will not come back with toenails. And you may get uh, un unlucky and maybe lose a toe or two because of frostbite. It's, it's, it's possible. So you need to make sure you're kitted out. But good thing is Mountain Slayers Uganda will not let you jump on a mountain if you're not properly kitted out. I like nat nature photography. I am an amateur photographer. I just like to tell stories through pictures. And uh, nothing gives you pictures so gorgeous like the mountain. Pablo, um, yes. your parting shot. Uh, thanks, Josephine. Um, I guess I just want to encourage everyone out there. No one ever got anything easily. You never achieve your goals by, it never comes easy to you. Everything beautiful, you have to work for it. If you want to reach heights, you have to get into a state of mind where you get rid of all the, all the excuses. When you come back, you're even stronger than how you went. Yeah. Your, yeah. your resolve is stronger. Your energy is stronger. You, you can face life. Yep. So I want to encourage everyone there that at least, at least one mountain, one mountain. You try it out. If it's not for you, it's not for you. Yeah. One mountain. <laughs> Tick. One mountain. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you summit. You don't try one mountain, but one mountain and summit. And summit. Yeah. Complete it. It's doable. You just have to be, like we said, it's 90% mental. You will not know how far you can push yourself until you, you're up there. You start a seven-day journey and you don't know when you're, you know, I'm starting on Monday, I'm coming back down on Sunday. You have no clue what you're going to face. And that first day, you put one foot, the first step, and then you just keep going. It gets tough, you sink in bog, you fall on rocks, you just get up and keep going. And I find that we bring that same resolve in our lives, in work, uh, uh, parenting, whatever you do, you're thinking, I've done harder things, I can get through this. So it, it's, a, it's a good thing, it builds character, I think. Mm, but yeah. also it, it allows you, like all of them have said, it's, you create experiences with people and you bond. You see people in their raw form. You yes. see them when they're scared. You see them when they're about to give up and then push through. Yes. It's amazing. You, you never see them that way in an office or in a restaurant, the same way you see them on a mountain. So you should try it. One mountain, then push yourself for a second one, Josephine, <laughs> and then, <laughs> then we see <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's been lovely, yeah. guys. I, just one quick question, um, just a yes or no. Did it, do you do medical tests before you go, just to be sure that you can actually um, withstand something like that? Yeah. There's a, t a list of things. If you're hypertensive, you have to tell us. If you're diabetic, you have to tell us. You know, there's medical conditions that you're going to know that are not going mm -hmm. to surprise anyone on top of a mountain. But mm -hmm. whether we're going to do a brain scan, whether we're to, no, we're not going to do that. If you're pregnant and you're coming to a mountain, chances are people will discourage you from going up Renzori, you know, because you, you might die. And but you can do Elgon. But you can do Elgon. <laughs> but you, you can probably do yeah. Elgon, yeah. yeah. You know, stuff All like right. that. It's, uh, thank, you, thank you so much, guys. I don't want you to send the pregnant women running up mountains. Um, <laughs> but I thank you for your time. And I do agree with you. It builds character and it builds resolve. Even from that one little mountain that I climbed, um, there was quite a bit of stuff that I learned. Thank you so much for taking just the time to just speak with me. Close, yes. Are you able to disclose that mountain? <laughs> I kept on asking. Mount Fati. Yes. You're going to say something about mountains. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>